Need to Remember is You is generally quite a simple game, except for lacking maybe a couple of objects and some other functional limitations. A lot of the game stages could essentially be remade in Mario Maker. So in this day and age of people creating their own 2D levels, what value do Nintendo's own 2D platformers still have? I'd argue there is no single stage in the New Super Mario Bros. series of games which answers that question more so than 7 Dash Airship from New Super Mario Bros. U. How is it that boarding the airship achieves this unique effect? Hello everyone, Rhymia here. Let me explain how 7 Dash Airship works. Most stages in New Super Mario Bros. U are really quite simple. There's a selection of 2D tiles which make up the ground the player can interact with. There's some enemies to avoid and platforms to utilize. Maybe a couple power-ups or star coins to collect. And that's pretty much it. Though 7 Nash Airship has all of those things, unlike arguably any other stage in New Super Mario Bros. it almost tells a kind of story. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let's first play through the stage and see what it's all about. This stage is preceded on the world map by Bowser's airship looming over you as you unwillingly enter the level, and this same visual is carried on into the stage itself with the front of the ship floating ahead weightlessly as you are forced to walk under it by the moving camera. The turbulent thundercloud background you need to this stage sets the mood quite well. As you move under the floating vessel you might be lured in by a couple of innocently floating coins, and then suddenly as you are collecting those coins, the same mechanical Bowser hand which was teased all throughout the game shows up in the level itself, almost crushing you as it squishes the surrounding plants. What follows next is a somewhat simple area of repetitive land masses, made threatening by the ever-repeating smashes of the mechanical limb chasing you throughout the stage. Just as you think the hand has given up its crushing mission, it returns even stronger than before, now literally smashing through the terrain in a way no other object in the game can. And then, after a somewhat simple star coin made even easier by the acorn suit you are supplied with, the threat is suddenly over. Instead of any further mega hand shenanigans, the stage stays true to its name and makes the player board the actual airship. What follows is an arguably dull and honestly quite boring section with this motion controlled platform and a few burners and rocky wrench enemies. Nothing that hasn't been seen before in other Mario games. In fact, strangely, the stage almost entirely switches between this first half from a unique and almost terrifying chase by a foe that has been built up for the entire game, to a somewhat mundane motion control section with nothing new to offer. After two star coins, just as simple as the first, you enter a pipe finally leaving what has so far been a continuous section. In this new area, you'll be, quite confusingly, greeted by a second midway flag, something unique to this stage among all others in New Super Mario Bros. And after somewhat annoyingly tricking the player into giving up their acorn suit for the far less useful fire flower, you are thrust into a Bowser Jr. boss fight. Though one could argue Jr.'s extendable arms are a form of continuation of the mechanics seen in the first half of the stage, in truth they act completely differently in this boss fight and are thus simply a visual reference at most. On top of this, the bombs which are thrown throughout this fight have not even shown up throughout the rest of this stage. Quite a missed opportunity that I'd say. Anyways, you get the point. Much like how the two halves of this stage don't have much to do with each other, this boss fight doesn't really have much to do with this stage as a whole either. So, all in all, though 7 Nash Airship certainly has a unique structure and tone compared to most other stages in East Mario Raju, from a level design standpoint it actually isn't even all that good. Instead of the classic introduction of and expansion on a few mechanics all throughout the level, this stage starts off interesting me and then throws out most of its potential and set up ideas halfway through to be replaced with dull mechanics which we've already seen a bunch of throughout the series. So if the level design in this stage is quite mediocre in a sense, what else about it is worth analysing then? The way in which this stage functions, technically, is quite unique compared to other 2D Mario stages. Not only does this stage switch from one traditional Mario theme to another, something not quite seen to this extent in any other Nita Mario's game, it manages to do all of this within one single area. We go from the familiar cloudy athletic theme seen at the start of this stage, all the way to a true airship section, all without using a pipe or anything. Now in order to achieve this transitionary effect, the level designer used a couple of tricks to make the transition work. As you may have noticed, 2D Mario games tend to have their camera bob up and down a bit in airship sections. 
dating all the way back to their first appearance in Super Mario Bros. 3. And if you pay close attention to the moving camera in the second half of New Super Mario Bros. U's 7 Dash Airship, this same effect is used as one might expect. And yet, going back to the beginning of this stage, though the camera still auto-scrolls here as well, it doesn't move up and down the way it tends to in airship sections. How is this effect magically applied somewhere halfway through the stage? Well, pay close attention to this part of the stage containing the midway flag, specifically the way in which a camera and tiles move. So we start off with static land tiles as you would expect, but just as the airship tiles start coming into frame, suddenly it looks like the tiles are moving, while the actual ground stays still. So did Nintendo just make the entire airship portion of this stage move? Well, if you know at least a bit about how the tile system of the New Super Mario Bros. games functions, you'd know that making large chunks of complicated tiles move, let alone half a stage worth of tiles and objects, is something the game is not really built for. No, instead, not too long after airship tiles start popping up on screen, a simple object is activated which just makes the screen move up and down a bit. You are actually visualised where that sprite is, and not too long after it is off screen, there we go, the camera effect is applied. Now, that is, like I said, quite simple, however, there is another effect in this section to really sell that this airship is moving compared to the ground. See, though the airship tiles you see here are truly not moving at all, the ground on which the midway flag is located is actually a special object made specifically for this stage, which is coded to move along with the airship camera effect once it is activated. This means that, though it looks like the airship is the part of this frame which is moving, it is in fact the only thing on screen here which isn't moving at all. You can even kind of tell there is something up with these blocks of land simply by the fact that they are not scaled completely perfectly compared to the normal tiles in game. But that of course is not the only somewhat complicated use of special objects in this stage, so now it's time to talk about the airship looming over you in the first half. Moving half a stage might be something the New Super Mario Bros. games aren't totally equipped to do, but moving a simple, albeit larger, repetitive object for half a stage is exactly what is done in the first half of this level. From the somewhat blurry and curving textures to the generally polygonal look of it, it is not hard to tell that this here is simply a large model being stretched out to span this whole section. This is simply a couple of objects which can be made to move slowly in a direction while bubbling up and down, a bit similarly to the way the camera does in the second half of the stage. So the first half of the stage has an actually modelled and moving object for the airship, the second simply has static tiles. How is this transition between the two handled? The level designer quite simply covered it up with some clouds, however it is completely possible to go up to this section here and have a look for yourself, and see one part of the airship simply fly away from the other. Bye. And then there is this big mechanical Bowser hand. This object is surprisingly quite simple in the way it works. The level designer simply had to place a sequence of objects all throughout the stage, each with values to indicate the order in which they are moved to, the move the hand makes once it reaches it, and the delay of the hand before making said move. And then the original hand sprite simply moves from object to object and leaves the screen once it reaches the final one. One fun fact is that the second phase of the hand, where it starts crashing through the tiles instead of simply slamming into the ground, is actually a completely different set of objects. And thus, you can even see the object waiting to start moving just off screen before you were even really meant to see it. By the way, the way in which this tile crushing effect is achieved is quite interesting as well. The main tile set of a lot of stages throughout the game, including this one, actually contain these broken off bits of tiles specifically meant for this section of this stage only. And so, once the hand crushes through the tiles, the game simply replaces the furthest left and right tiles the hand has crushed with these ones. Funnily enough, you can actually see how this doesn't always work perfectly. As, for example, at this point, the broken tile that is placed here doesn't line up with the tile there originally at all, really. So you might not have noticed any of these little inconsistencies before, but running back through the stage now with all we've learned kept in mind, it's quite fun to see. So, what does 7 Nation Airship mean for these members units as a whole? Well, as I alluded to before, unlike pretty much any other stage in these members, you, it tells a kind of story. All throughout the game, Bowser's mechanical hand is teased, and this is a payoff. Instead of Mario simply showing up in a new location out of thin air, this stage specifically shows the transition from one theme to another. Instead of this stage simply being a collection of mechanics we've seen before, it tries something new and almost more cinematic I suppose, if only for the first half. Sure, the new Super Mario Bros. series seems to have stopped, sure they were never amazingly unique games to begin with, 
but I believe this stage, mediocrely designed as it is, shows the way forward for Mario's 2D platformers as a whole. In a way, this stage almost feels like something you'd see in arguably much better platformers, such as the recent Donkey Kong games. Anyways, that's how 7 Nash Airship works, and thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this different kind of video from me, please let me know by leaving a like on this video. I'd also really appreciate suggestions for future level design analyses like this one. And if you really love this and you want to see more videos like this, I'd especially appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel as well. Anyways, till next time guys, bye!